Okay, another acceleration. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna be reviewing a Porsche Boxster S. First and foremost, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah, for giving me some time with this Boxster S. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And if you're looking for a new Jaguar or Land Rover, they sell them with no markup over MSRP, so they're definitely in the store to go for when it comes to that product. And then also, on a side note, for 2023 with the Boxster, there are not really any major changes. They've basically subtracted some colors, added some new colors, and then they've made Apple CarPlay standard across the lineup. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as it's been for the last few years. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So I'm showing you guys the key fob because, well, we're starting with the front. It's always weird for me to review Porsches, Porsches for the, uh, people that want me to say it that way because well, obviously made a rear engine with most of them and so yeah it's, yeah, it's just different for the walk around. Anyways, we've got the front here, which as you can see, it's very practical and that's one of the big benefits of buying a Porsche is the fact that, well, you've got some practical storage space up front and it's also one of the benefits of having a mid-engine sports car. Now, other than that, I can't close this one th with one hand. I'm gonna have to use both of them in just a moment, but there's the front. So let's go to the front end of this Boxster S, and you guys can see this is a pretty interesting spec with the red top and red interior. It's it's a Porsche thing. Anyways, we of course have the emblem front and center, and then we have these really cool LED headlights, which yeah, just have this unique appearance. And then you guys can see little daytime running light down below. We do have some parking sensors here on the front end. We obviously have the signature light washers. And one way to tell this is a box drove or 911 is the 911 lights are more like oval shaped, whereas this, you guys can see, it kind of has uh, more of a like squared off appearance there on the edge. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm not good at shapes. Anyways, there's the front end. Come around the side here, our tire and wheel setup is 235, 35, 20 in the front, and then 265, 35, 20 in the rear. And you guys can see from a wheel perspective, it looks like this has Carrera style wheels. Maybe I'm crazy, let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but they look like the wheels that would be on like a 911 Carrera. Anyways, we've got the red brake caliper, and you know, this doesn't actually need massive brake rotors because again, it's a pretty lightweight car. And then we have the signature gas cap here on the side. So uh, whenever you fill up your Porsche at the gas station, you always gotta like have the front near the nozzle rather than the back like most cars. And then obviously you guys can see here with our little intake on the side. And then if we take a few steps back, yeah, with our uh, red top and everything, it actually looks pretty cool to be honest. Like I, I know that that makes me uh, seem a little bit funky, but it, it it's interesting, that's for sure. So here's our key fob yet again, because now we're opening up the trunk and you can see it's decent from a storage space perspective if you actually want more storage space then you should go for the cayman because that one obviously doesn't have the whole soft top situation that takes up a bunch of storage space and notice we've got this for like the oil and then that looks like that's for the windshield wiper fluid i don't know not important for uh the ben hardy review but anyways that's the trunk area. While we're back here, I guess we'll go over the engine setup. So we have a turbocharged 2.5 liter flat four cylinder that goes through a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town, 25 on the highway with power puts being 350 horsepower and then 309 pound feet of torque. And I realized that another felt cap was probably for the coolant. Wow, anyways. There's the engine. Now let's finish things up with the rest of the rear here. So first off, I think the taillights look pretty dang cool in the back and then i love this little spoiler here as well with the porsche logo i think that's pretty cool and then 718 boxster s obviously and we have the center mounted exhaust tips there another cool thing more parking sensors in the rear and so yeah you know overall it's it's a pretty car now popping inside this interior is actually way nicer than i remember with the boxsters so like really nice leather trim here at the top which is probably hard to see because the lighting has red stitching and then we have really nice red leather down below with more red stitching. And you guys can see here with the carbon fiber trim up above, We've got our memory seat function here, window controls, and then the mirror adjustments. They do power fold in, there's a quick look at them. And then our Buckster S plaque. And then we've got these really nice leather seats. So you guys can see perforated in the center portion of the seat. And then down below with the bolstering and all that. 
And then look at all of our adjustments. Material use is fantastic. We have these little switches to open up the trunk and the front. And then we've got our pedal layout just down below. And then light control just up above. And then that's actually the uh, little built-in key to turn on the car so you don't have to stick a key in anymore. It's kind of interesting. And more carbon fiber trim. And then more leather trim on the dash. Really nice, again, from a material standpoint. But let's pop in. Now, before we go over the steering wheel setup, I want to quickly show you guys the door panel since I wasn't able to show you guys a good view earlier. So here's kind of like your general view on the panel itself. Pretty cool with the material use and everything. But anyways, as for the steering wheel, really nice leather all around. You can see the paddle shifters here on the back of the steering wheel. And then we got some controls for like the radio, for example, and then controls for the center stack here on the other side, phone controls, like, you know, normal practical stuff built into the steering wheel itself. And then we have a turn signal stock, cruise control stock, windshield wiper stock, and yeah, pretty impressive. Now I like this. We've got a pretty simplistic gauge cluster. RPM's front and center, which is most important, and then you got like your speed off to the side, and then you have the screen to tell you different bits of info on the car on the other side, which we can just like scroll through different menus, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. And so like so much nicer than the screen setup you have in the 911 where there's like five different screens and you can't even see half of them. Like if you're watching this Porsche, Porsche, sorry, then uh, go back to this screen on the 911. Now here's the center infotainment screen. First off, if we pop it into reverse, we get a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. And then we got a little view of the uh, boxer because, well, parking sensors are a thing. And then as for the screen itself, I mean, response time with the screen is pretty solid. Overall, it makes cool like uh, clicking sounds, which is definitely a fun time. And so, yeah, overall, pretty decent infotainment system. And a lot of controls to the radio down below and then climate controls as well, dual zone climate system, heated cooled seats here for the front. And then we have our shifter for that seven speed dual clutch, which you feel like you're doing something substantial when you're putting it into gear. That's something that Porsche has done a really good job with. And then we have our 718 logo here, and this is to lock and unlock the doors. Sport mode, and it actually makes the, it automatically opens up the valves, which you can open it up separately. And then you guys can see for the spoiler to raise and lower it. And we have our top down and uh, top up buttons there in the center. I'll show that to you in a moment and then more carbon fiber, and got our center console here. Pretty normal setup, and glove box. And does this still have the, uh... yes it does. This still has the crazy over-engineered cup holders. So I guess that this is why you shouldn't get a 911 is because, well, first off, this gauge cluster. Second off, the cup holders that everyone is like super um, nostalgic about basically. And then notice with the nice leather trim on the dash, and that's something that I wanna like just quickly touch base on again, it's just like the trim on this is all fantastic. Like everything's covered in really high quality leather, carbon fiber, like it's just, just a good interior. Okay, so we gotta get some top down action. So we just pull this switch and well, some stuff happens, the top goes down. That was fast. That was that was honestly pretty dang fast. And well, show you guys. Here's what it looks like with the top down. Definitely looks a lot better with the top down. And it's kind of like a little red accent piece now. That's pretty cool. But you know, that's the big benefit of the Boxster is that you can have that top down driving experience, which sadly won't work for me today because it's super windy. But there's what it looks like. So here's our window sticker for the Boxster S, the original window sticker. And yes, those are Carrera S wheels. I guess I uh, guessed properly. But man, these things have gotten pretty dang expensive because after all options, $95,200 for a Boxster. That's crazy. <laughs> but anyways, let's see if it drives like 95000 I suppose. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors, and throughout the rest of the, well, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's set off. So, setting off here in the Boxster S, and something that I feel like reviewers never talk about with uh, Porsches is the fact that the dual clutch is pretty clunky at low speeds. Like, okay, I'm gonna come to a complete stop. Okay, I'm gonna go into reverse. It 
like you, you it probably isn't gonna come up on the camera but the car kind of like shudders a little it's like and then like then it kind of jumps into gear so like everyone always talked about how this is the best dual clutch on the market yada 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 but it's still a dual clutch it still does you know dual clutch stuff it's not nearly as smooth or as refined as an eight-speed autom or sorry as an automatic i said eight-speed because that's what porsche uses in their suvs but that's why they use a regular automatic in their suvs because a dual clutch just would not uh, work with that uh, market but you know with the sports car market a little bit of a different story so with the valves closed it's super quiet with them open it's still pretty quiet to be honest maybe it's because i just drove a uh, v8 f type before this and that's why i feel like this is quiet but you know it is what it is ride quality is really good actually i'm pretty impressed so i owned a 2006 boxster s for i don't know i think like six to eight months i can't remember exactly how long i had it for but it had a manual transmission and i remember I had to concede quite a bit with that car from like a comfort perspective, but this seems like it's way more comfortable than what I experienced. Let's see how these gear shifts are. Yeah, I mean, those downshifts are like instantaneous. So that's a big plus. And I mean, I, I do need to state the fact that like this is definitely a much better like setup uh, than the, uh, what was it? the tiptronic automatic that they used to have in the boxsters that thing was just atrocious so like the dual clutch although it's not the most refined transmission you know it, it's it's a big it's a big improvement that is for sure and you know while we're kind of stuck here for a second I, seriously i'm so impressed with the interior like i feel like you know the interior of my boxster s was pretty good but like this is on a whole nother level like there's so much nice love the one thing i will say though about the leather in uh porsches is they like stretch it like hardcore because there's like no give in it whatsoever which is kind of interesting yeah those gear shifts are just like instant so yeah i mean it, it does its job when you're up and moving it's just that the you know lower speeds that sometimes it can be kind of obnoxious just like you know every other dual clutch now it does have, it does still have Porsche's, you know, amazing steering and handling. Like this thing's on rails. And I don't knock on super fast, but still you can tell like there's no body roll. And it, it's crazy like how this drives because this is a soft top and it drives pretty much like a coupe. So I think they did a great job with making this rigid. Yeah, it does over this little bumpity bump yeah pretty good there's a little bit of noise from the soft top but not a ton again you could easily mitigate that by just getting a cayman instead of a boxster yeah i mean you know even though it sounds like i'm being kind of critical on this it's still really still a really good sports car yeah, that low speed is just kind of like a it's kind of like an awkward chirp forward but let's see how fast this thing is <laughs> that's pretty good i mean you always hear the saying there's like horsepower and then there's porsche horsepower and it's true like this thing definitely kicks way above its weight you can hear some turbo noises so I mean, it seems like they kind of try to hide it, but also kind of not at the same time. Because there's like a little bit of blow off. I will say though, this engine does not sound good compared, like at all compared to the flat six that used to be in the Boxster. Like I remember with my Boxster, it was like, I wanted to like rev it up to hear the engine. Whereas this, it's like, if I want to go fast, I'll rev it up. But like, I don't like, I don't like the sound. Um, I wouldn't say that it sounds like a Subaru. I know there's some comments um, with this powertrain. It, it's not quite uh, the same as a Subaru, but it, yeah, it just doesn't sound good. Okay, another acceleration. <laughs> this thing's fast. This thing is like, it, this thing's quick. That's for sure. And again, it's so flat with the handling. So yeah, summing things up here with the Boxster S, I kind of have uh, mixed feelings. I didn't even put it in the sport mode. Oh my goodness, let's let's see what it does like in sport mode. 
See if it's even better. Is there anyone behind me? No, there's no one behind me. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's even better in sport mode. Oh, and you get like popples. Okay, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, still have mixed feelings. So like, I feel like the Boxster S still is a, you know, for a convertible, it's still a pretty good looking car. I do prefer the styling of the Cayman over the Boxster. Um, the dual clutch is a huge improvement over the old automatic that the Boxster used to have. And it's, it's for a dual clutch, it's really good. That being said though, I just don't know about this four cylinder. Like it's really hard for me to get behind this because like I've driven, you know, I owned a Boxster for a while with a six cylinder. I've driven um, a couple Caymans with a six cylinder. I've driven a 911 GT3 RS, which obviously also has the flat six. And like, I feel like that's, that's what defines Porsche is that flat six. And so, yeah, does this have Porsche handling dynamics um, and looks and steering and responsiveness? Yes. And it does this power, is this powertrain responsive? Yes. Like it, it, you do still feel that it's turbocharged. There's no hiding that. Like there's turbo lag and everything. Um, it, everything's there, but like the loss of the sound, it's, for me, this is just me personally. And you know, obviously the sales numbers don't support this cause you know, people still buy these. But for me, like this is enough that I wouldn't buy this car personally. I would like, cause they, they do make like a 4.0 version of like the box. They obviously have like the Spider and then the Cayman GT4, but then they also have like, you can get the 4.0 just in like a regular Cayman or Boxer. I would put myself on the list for one of those. I, I don't, I couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't do this. Like the, especially $95,000 and it's, it's just, the sound is so underwhelming. Might as well be electric at this point with that sound, but let me know what you guys think. That's got something's up for our video on this Boxster S. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah for giving me some time with this Boxster S. Check out the intro in the description down below. I'll see you.